Indian Town is a, a small rural community. We have high elevation here. Uh, we're 30 miles from the coast, which helps protect us from uh, hurricanes. Our service area uh, entails about 313 square miles. Uh, one of the unique things about Indian Town is uh, the fact that we are here on the uh, St. Lucie Waterway, which is the only uh, waterway that crosses Florida. We have uh, cross-state rail that comes through here. We've got cross-state highways, but we're the Mount Everest of South Florida. That means we're about 40 feet above sea level. It's really kind of a pretty cool place for disaster recovery. So we've tried to find a little niche there where uh, we can do underground fiber end-to-end -end with a data center on it where people can actually access their data and some of our bigger companies are really taking notice. Fiber is very important to all businesses and having it right here in Indian Town at 40 feet above sea level is a great opportunity not only for the local folks but for folks outside of Martin County to consider Martin County and Indian Town as a location for their business. Any company that's reliant on technology and data exchange, this is a very good component to be added to the community. So most companies will need this to exist in the area, and I think it'll increase employment and employers throughout the region. We took the risk. We uh, borrowed the money. We uh, replaced everything with fiber. We went from about a 19% take rate to an 81% take rate in two months as a result of our fiber program. So fiber and our, our Calyx network has done a lot to really help us in that way. We also had a great opportunity working with our local county who was also building a fiber network. It, it is very exciting to both parties. So, um, you know, a partnership where both sides are delighted to be in it and uh, feel that they're progressing together is the best kind of partnership there is. So, so far the venture is uh, very successful. The ability to swap fiber with them and now we're located in 20 of the county's largest business parks over on the east coast so we now have access to over 200,000 customers. And I chose ITS to put in the exclusive fiber optic network here at Monterey Commons. He's set up the system, he's got all the fiber in and it's available to every tenant in these buildings now. And we're very pleased with it. It's more reliable than anything we've had before, far, far faster. That's really been a, a real boom to our opportunity to be able to generate uh, non-regulated revenues and uh, be able to uh, secure our future. We did training sessions. We, we did so much to try to educate our general public about now that fiber's coming out, here's how your life can be different. And so we trained even our accountants. Everybody in our company went to sales and marketing training. We even trained our outside plant people to talk about fiber and what they could do and how important it was going to be to the customers. We just really had to survey our assets and figure out what can we do well and how can we become and find that unique niche. It just so happened in our area, underground fiber end to end when we added the data center just became a very compelling offer. The data center that we purchased, we built, uh, was in the space that was created in our central office as a result of you know all of the new technologies you know being much smaller than what they were we had probably freed up over half our CO space. Uh, we used to have a DCO, we used to have an EWSD and because of switch collapse we've actually been able to leverage this part of the central office to start providing uh, co-location services for our customers. A big thing for our partners was touching. They wanted to be able to see where our data would be as opposed to, oh yeah, we're going to host it out in a cloud in Texas. Well, that's great, but if they can't see it, it's a, hard, it's a hard thing to grasp. Now that we have a big enough pipe internet bandwidth to go off-site with our backups, uh, the next step is who do we choose. And uh, we were really excited to hear that Jeff had the um, SOC 2 Type 2 uh, certificate saying that they now have a secure site that we can host their data. Um, so they can host our data actually, so we're pretty excited about it. Now that we've got the data center, we've kind of played on the idea of having cloud voice. And what's so exciting about cloud voice is next time that hurricane or whatever comes through our area, just take your phone home with you because all you have to do is find an internet connection anywhere around the world and you're in business. And uh, what is following real closely is we're finding that we're becoming the IT department for many of our customers because if they can locate in our data center with a server, especially when we can provide them uh, a virtual server, uh, a lot of their IT needs are you know, not as critical on site. We tell all of our customers, uh, you'll never have to call 1-800, who the heck are you? 
you're always going to talk to Tom or Sue or Bob. You're going to know who you're dealing with. You're going to meet those people and uh, we're going to do a good job. I, I mentioned yesterday, you know, the importance of that. Uh, we're so, uh, we feel that 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 is one of the most differentiating factors. I mean, people are so frustrated with the poor service that they get and the interruptions and the lack of reliability that they receive. And uh, we just think that people are just really appreciate it when they get great service. And uh, so it's something we've really tried to capitalize on at ITS. Uh, so much to the fact that we have actually uh, restated our mission statement. I am very proud to say that I'm absolutely confident that every one of our employees knows what our mission statement is and they know what it means. And so uh, not, it's not that difficult, but we've, we've actually reduced it to two words, and that is noticeably better. <laughs>